of our Oculus Rift the VR Revolution is here. Oculus Rift 2. The Valve Index. Oculus Quest. Oculus Quest 2. HTC Vive. VR has been around for a while now, and with new headsets constantly talking about being the future of gaming, most people don't even consider buying one. Despite billions of investments and massive games that even people who don't own VR talk about, it still feels like it's stuck in a niche. So, what is the biggest problem with VR? Today, we're going to look at why VR isn't held to the same status as your typical screen console like Xbox or PlayStation. So if you're ready, grab a drink, a snack, and your handcrafted FIG and body pillow, and let's get into this Friday's video. So before we look into VR's problems, let me give you a very brief history. I could go all the way back to the 1960s, where the first virtual reality was made, but we'll start in 2012, when a teenager called Palmer Lucky launched a Kickstarter for Oculus Rift. Two years later, Facebook bought Oculus for $2 billion, and the modern day competition began. Now, this is going to be pretty important later in the video, so just keep this in the back of your mind for now. In 2019, the first standalone VR, the Oculus Quest 1, was created, and then would go on to make a Quest 2, Quest 3, and then the Quest 3 Pro. Now, with all of that out of the way, we can finally look into VR's problems. Here, I have four problems that VR is constantly facing and seems to struggle to get rid of. Number one, friction. One of the biggest issues with VR is how difficult it is to get into. Although the Quest 2 sold over 20 million units, a lot of people who own them don't really play it. But why? Because of friction. Not the kind of friction you get from beating it raw, but a disagreement, conflict, or resistance to progress or harmony. But we're mainly looking at conflict and resistance to harmony. It basically means, damn, this is annoying, even if the outcome is good. Every time you want to play the VR, there's a checklist you have to go through. Is the headset charged? Do you have enough room? Can you be bothered to stand up? Do your controllers have batteries? Are you okay with your hair getting messy? And I swear to God, is the temperature of your room okay? Yeah, if your room's temperature is too hot or cold, the lens will fog up. Now, compare that to a console where you just turn it on, sit down, and play. VR isn't casual at all, and although Matter have tried to minimize this issue, there's still a lot of effort just to play a game that, to be honest, isn't really that good, but I'll get to the problem with the game. So that's just one point, and to be honest, it really isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it's a lot of effort, but the pros of being able to have nearly full control over your character's body totally outweigh the cons of like five minutes of setup and a small bit of planning. So what about an issue that isn't solved with a little bit of planning, but persists throughout the entire time you're playing? I'm talking about comfort and fatigue. Everyone who owns a VR knows how uncomfortable they can be. If you've played VR for more than an hour before, I'm sure you've experienced red marks, itching, sweating, motion sickness, messy hair, and like a load of other things. And although a lot of this can be ignored, having a bulky headset constantly pushing against your head can get really, really uncomfortable. And for fatigue, unless you're wanting to get tired, something like a 10 hour long story game can end up taking two to three times longer to complete than a 2D game, because you need six so many. There's also a third point I wanted to make here, and that's physical limitations. Although not everyone has them, not being able to stand or being prone to motion sickness completely stop someone from being able to play VR. And although you can get accessories for it, playing VR with glasses is a whole thing in itself. There was a story I once heard about a lady trying to use hand tracking, but she'd lost one of her fingers and the hand tracking was really bugging out. I know these issues are really hard to fix, and unfortunately for a lot of people, it's a big case of suck it up and accept you can't play. But things like having to separately buy a face paint for glasses is kind of sad. Let's say you're perfectly healthy. All of your little piggies are still going to the market and you have all of the accessories you need. You're now ready to play the immersive, awesome games people have been talking about. Ahem. When you think of must-have VR games, you might think of Half-Life Alex or Saints and Sinners if you like story games, or maybe you prefer a bit more freedom with Simulator or Boneworks. But aside from a select few games, the library feels really thin. There's tons of shovelware, indie developers experimenting, and ports, but very few AAA experiences. 
But why? Because building in VR is expensive, difficult, and has a small player base. Until developers can pump out consistent, high quality games, VR isn't going to attract people. And I have a real life example. The other day I was talking to this guy and my and he loves games. I hope he doesn't see this because if he sees that I call him some guy, then ah, bye bye job. And I asked him what he thought of VR and he said something like, I never really bothered with it. And not to mention the originality, or should I say, lack of originality in games. Gorilla Tag, it had a unique movement that could totally be used in like so many different ways. And yet every time I see this movement used, the game is somehow related to monkeys or gorillas. You gotta respect the hustle. If little kids will go out of their way to buy the game, fair enough. But I would honestly go as far to say that VR, especially Quest, with things like App Lab and SideQuest, have more Gorilla Tag clones than actual games. It really just feels like VR is still in beta and has a select few games for people to sample to experience it. And when you think about it, the fact that people actually go out of their way to buy consoles up to 500 bucks just to play exclusive games. And yet, on VR, what's the selling point for games? Like, you can get employed. So now we've seen, even if you're in the small majority of people who are physically able, can be bothered with the setup and comfort, the games really aren't that worth it. But similar to the beef between Tupac and Biggie or Goldilocks and the Three Bears, I really have it out for VR. No, I don't, actually. My whole channel is about VR. Speaking of my channel, a little birdie who's red, white, and isn't a bird at all, called YouTube Sets, tells me only 2.2% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. Is it because the quality of my content is dog shit? No! Seriously, though, this video took 30 long hours to research, write a script, record the script, and then edit. Last video, I got one subscriber every 40 viewers. And now I'm curious to see how low I can get that ratio. So if you want to help me out, be sure to subscribe and come back next Friday to see how low we got it. Anyway, back to the video. The final point I want to talk about is accessibility, both the lack of and the too much. Now I have professionally decided to start with, um, too much. Do you remember at the start of this video when I said, Now, this is going to be pretty important later in the video, so just keep this in the back of your mind for now. In 2019, the first standalone VR, the Oculus Quest 1, was created, and then would go on to make a Quest 2, Quest 3, and then the Quest 3 Pro. If you did, then good job, because I guarantee most people didn't, you little teachers bet. Well, having a standalone means the brand new, immersive MetaQuest 3 is the perfect gift for little Jimmy for Christmas. I bet you can't wait to not be able to afford any game, download Gorilla Tag or Rec Room, then start screaming at people. But what if little Jimmy actually contributed to society and got employed? Then he could buy the Big Daddy VR that you have to run on a PC. And after doing some real extensive research and looking really hard, I concluded if you wanted a PC VR good enough to be able to run, I don't know, like anything half decent, it would cost about $1,500 to year yourself a setup. So, to conclude, VR isn't dead, by no means is it dead, but it also isn't mainstream. Until it can get some more games that are worth buying and fix some of the comfort issues, it will remain a niche. The perfect kind of niche for a YouTuber to just slip right on in there and make deep dives every, I don't know, like Friday or something. Someone really humble and funny and attractive and humble. But what do you think is holding VR back? I'd love to know your thoughts. And as always, stay safe, and I'll see you next Friday. Toodles.